Firstly, you reach the walls at Turin's. Like those of Mycenae, they were thought to have built by the Cyclopeans. They are around 7 metres high now, but extended to as high as 10 metres in the Mycenaean times. The entrance ramp is on our left as we approach. Because of the earthquake damage, we don't go up it now. The ramp looks simple, but was cleverly designed to prevent attack and maximise casualties to anyone who tried. From the ramp, it was a short walk to the main gate. The gate was thought to be about 3 metres high, although it's only half this height now, and it's about 3 metres wide, therefore being of a similar width to the Lion Gate at Mycenae. Unfortunately, much of the stonework has not survived, but you can still get a good impression of the scale of the gateway from the remaining supports. Next up we have the Megaron. The Megaron itself is a large rectangular room, often with four columns supporting the ceiling. Megarons were used for all sorts of important events and are mentioned frequently in ancient Greek literature. Towards the east of the Megaron was a small platform on which the king's throne would have been. The floor was plastered and had images of octopi and dolphins on it. The walls were also covered with plaster on which frescoes were painted on damp plaster of rich ladies and a hunting scene. Among the royal rooms is a bathroom where a highly polished stone floor has holes drilled into it for drainage. This was made out of polished limestone slabs. Some of the most famous features of the city of Turin are the galleries, which were built into the outer walls of the city. Some of the galleries were up to 30 metres long. Leading off the galleries were a large number of rooms. At the end of the 13th century BC, the site was extended to the north by adding an extra loop to the wall with the area containing workshops and houses. Finally, just after half a mile from Turin, another Tho Tholos tomb has been found, built in the side of a hillside. It is about 6 metres tall and 6 metres wide, with an entrance of 1.5 metres high. Inside the tomb was discovered a large round stone, which might have been an altar. It has a superb cobbled roof and massive blocks of stone, which were used to hold up the roof of the entrance.